Hey guys, welcome to Macintosh Weekly. And today this video is about macOS Sequoia 15 developer and public beta 8 update. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And now let's begin. Apple today seeded the 8th beta of an upcoming macOS 15 Sequoia update to developers and public for testing purposes, with the software coming a week after the release of the 7th beta. To update your Mac to macOS Sequoia Beta 8, open System Settings, then go to the Software Update section, and then check for updates. Here you can see the update is available for my device. This Mac OS Sequoia Beta 7 update size is around 1.54 GB for my device. Click on Update Now, and then agree to the SLA to begin the update on your device and enter the password when prompted. And as you can see, the device has been successfully updated to Mac OS Sequoia Beta 8, and the build number is 24A5331B. Talking about the new thing in this build, as of now, we couldn't spot any changes made. Now, moving forward and talking about the Mac OS Sequoia 15 Beta 8 release notes, the Mac OS 15 SDK provides support to develop apps for Mac computers running Sequoia 15 Beta 8. The SDK comes bundled with Xcode 16, available from the Mac App Store. Regarding accessibility resolved issues, fixed user might be unable to play newly added background sounds, fire and night. Regarding app intents known issues, at union value types currently only work as intent results. Attempting to use a at union value as the type of an intent parameter or entity property results in failure to compile. Fixed. Parameterless parameter and property wrappers might cause protocol conformance failures. The workaround is to use parentheses on the property wrapper regarding App Store new features. Starting in macOS 15, the App Store no longer needs twice the space free for an initial app download and install. The free space requirement will now be the final install size of the app, plus a small buffer. Developers should consider this change in any messaging they might have around size requirements. Regarding AppKit new features, added API to request a window share when the user performs some action in the app. Presenter who starts a presentation while on a video conferencing call can now be given an option to share that presentation with other call participants. This addresses an issue where the presenter might not want to share all application windows and might not have an affordance to start sharing the presentation once it has begun. The API allows one NS window to request sharing of another existing window or of a window to be provided in a callback. Regarding resolved issues, fixed app kits worn once logs have been moved to OS log error with a worn once logging category in order to increase their visibility to developers. Regarding application firewall deprecations, application firewall settings are no longer contained in a property list. If your app or workflow relies on changing application firewall settings by modifying library preferences, com.apple.alf.plist, then you need to make changes to use the socket filter fdu command line tool instead. Regarding ARKit resolved issues, Fixed, iPhone and iPad apps on Apple Silicon Macs quit unexpectedly when initializing AR skeleton definition. Regarding automation, new features, to improve security, the process of allowing an application to control Finder has changed. Instead of a modal allow don't allow dialog, the attempt to control Finder fails, and a notification appears that directs the user to allow control in system settings, security and privacy, automation. Regarding backup resolved issues, Fixed, attempting to create a new encrypted time machine backup on a time capsule or other AFP file server will fail. Regarding camera resolved issues. Fixed, using presenter overlay in full size mode with a single shared window and reactions at the same time can result in glitching. Here you can also notice a slight glitch when using few of the reactions. Regarding CF network resolved issues, Fixed, CF Network Execute Proxy Auto Configuration Script and CF Network Execute Proxy Auto Configuration URL have always returned a plus one retained CF type object, 
but the function declarations were not decorated with the CF returns retained attribute until iOS 18, macOS 15, tvOS 18, and visionOS 2. For C-based languages, the Clang static analyzer might note if the object is leaked. No source code changes are required, but they are encouraged to fix the leak. For Swift, this changes the return type of these functions from unmanaged to the actual CF type returned, which will require a source change to fix when compiling with newer SDKs. However, Swift programs compiled with older SDKs will continue to work on the new OSs, though the returned CF type object will continue to leak as it did prior to this change. Regarding CoreML resolved issues, Fixed CoreML model deployment API is unavailable, ML model collection and ML model collection entry. Consider using background assets or NS your session instead. Inference time for large CoreML models is slower than expected on a subset of M series SOCs, which is M1, M1 Max on macOS. Regarding create ML known issues, 3D object views in create ML might stop rendering correctly, causing occasional flickering or appearing fully blacked out. The workaround is to restart create ML. Regarding core spotlight resolved issues, fixed, iPhone and iPad apps on Apple Silicon Macs quit unexpectedly when invoking CS searchable item attribute set set action identifiers regarding directory service deprecations. Directory service plugin support has been removed. Developers should migrate to platform SSO. Regarding finder resolved issues, fixed home videos unexpectedly sync as music videos to iPod Nano, seventh generation. Regarding foundation new features, JSON encoded output formatting .sorted keys will now sort keys with a different ordering. Previously, keys were sorted using a numeric, case-insensitive, or localized ordering. Beginning in beta 4, keys are sorted lexicographically based on the key's UTF-8 contents. Regarding foundation resolved issues, fixed. Date.components format style was incorrectly producing strings like 1M, with the date components format style dot style dot condensed abbreviated style and strings like one min with the dot narrow style instead of the other way around. The behavior was corrected to match the behavior of duration units format style unit width. Regarding FSKit resolved issues, users with connected MS-DOS volumes might receive an intermittent error on system startup saying the internal MS-DOS partition cannot be repaired and needs to be reformatted. Workaround is rebooting might resolve the issue. Do not attempt to reformat the volume. Regarding headphone accommodations resolved issues, fixed, headphone accommodations won't be applied to headphones. Regarding iCloud Drive resolved issues, fixed, frequently changed files syncing over iCloud Drive will use more data than expected. Regarding iPhone mirroring known issues, universal clipboard might not to work during iPhone mirroring. Scrolling with a scroll wheel with Logitech mice or typing with a Bluetooth keyboard might not work with iPhone mirroring. The workaround is to disable Logitech options on Mac to use the scroll wheel on Logitech mice or use a built-in or external Apple keyboard. The spacebar does not work when full keyboard access is enabled. Workaround is to disable full keyboard access. Regarding logging new features, by default, the sudo command in macOS does not have logging enabled. To enable logging for sudo, simply remove the line defaults log allowed from sudoers configuration file. Regarding Mac Catalyst new features, when building against the macOS 15.0 Catalyst SDK or newer, UI window scene system frame changes using UI window scene.geometry preferences. Mac can be animated by wrapping the request in the existing UI view animation API. Animate with duration duration. Mixing such system frame animations with animations of individual UI views is not recommended. Instead, rely on auto layout constraints to reposition scene contents during the system frame animation. Regarding Mac Catalyst resolved issues fixed. Starting with macOS 15.0, the activation state of all attached UI scenes in Mac Catalyst apps will now also be changed to UI scene, activation state .background when the machine and or the attached displays go to sleep as an indication that the scenes are not producing user-visible pixels. Fixed, when building against the macOS 15.0 Catalyst SDK or newer, the true value and false value for toggle switch elements, PS toggle switch specifier, in your settings bundle will be respected when reading writing user defaults. Regarding Maps new features, introduced Place ID, a unique and persistent identifier, 
added new result types to mklocalsearch.request and additional point of interest category values, introduced PlaceCard API to show Maps PlaceCard UI, talking about the resolved issues. In searches that use mklocalsearch.request, the result type option physical feature is ignored. Fixed, the PlaceCard API fails to load place details. Fixed, satellite map images might not appear for users on Intel Max. Regarding known issues, conversion between a point in the map view and a physical location, CL location coordinate 2D, might be imprecise at high zoom levels. Regarding music resolved issues, fixed, artwork for the currently playing song might be incorrectly displayed in the music. Regarding networking resolved issues, fixed, for apps linked on macOS 15, iOS 18, or newer, the default user agent request header field value generated by URL session now includes the unlocalized bundle name instead of the localized bundle name. Regarding notifications known issues, user might be unable to snooze calendar notifications. Regarding object tracker resolved issues, fixed. Training object tracker reference objects might fail without warning for unsupported USDZ inputs. Regarding photos resolved issues, Fixed, photos and videos might stop syncing via iCloud Photo Library. Regarding platform new features on Apple Silicon-based devices with M3 or later, and A16 Bionic or later, the values returned by reading the CNTRQ EL0 and CNTVCT EL0 registers have been updated to 1 GHz instead of the prior value of 24 MHz. It is still recommended for apps to use LibSystem APIs like Mock Absolute Time for timekeeping. Your app will not be impacted by this change if it uses Apple's timekeeping APIs. For compatibility purposes, this change will only be visible when using the SDK associated with this release or later. On macOS, applications running inside a virtualization framework VM will continue to receive the legacy behavior. The firmware image for iBoot will be made available in clear text in the PCC image. To reduce the overhead imposed by firmware encryption and align policies where appropriate, firmware encryption has been disabled for iBoot on iOS, macOS, watchOS, tvOS, and visionOS. Regarding power resolved issues. Fixed, users with default wallpaper, macOS beta, on Intel laptops with an AMD GPU might see elevated battery drain, device temperatures, and fan noise. Regarding quick look deprecations. Support for deprecated quick look generator plugins is being removed. To provide previews and thumbnails for your custom file types, migrate to Quick Look Preview Extension and Thumbnail Extension API. Regarding Reality Kit new features, USD files which use Catmull Clark subdivision now render using subdivision in Reality Kit. Meshes which produce less than 35,000 patches can render using subdivision. This can increase memory consumption and reduce rendering performance. Virtual objects now render using the Display P3 color gamut. When using a drawable queue connected to a texture resource with the dot color semantic, render using the display P3 color space. Regarding the resolved issues fixed, resolved an issue where iPhone and iPad apps on Apple Silicon Max quit unexpectedly when using object capture session. Fixed, using an image 2D array shader graph node in Reality Composer Pro might result in corruption or a system crash. Fixed, physics simulation behavior is different from previous releases. Fixed, emphasize actions are always additive and should be played with separate animated value set to true. Fixed, in the Swift 6 language mode, subclasses of the entity class fail to compile. Fixed, the trigger mode of collision component no longer generates collision events when both involved collision shapes use the dot trigger mode. Regarding known issues, reality files written by beta versions of Reality Kit might not load in later versions. Workaround. Only distribute reality files written by released or release candidate versions of Reality Kit. Regarding deprecations, in previous versions, the order of child entities was sometimes preserved. Now, the order of an entity's children might not be reliable and can change unexpectedly when any child is reparented. Regarding screen time resolved issues, fixed. When an Apple Watch is upgraded to 11.0 from an earlier beta, Screen time app limits might be deleted for both the parent and child. If this occurs, parent will need to add back the app limits. Regarding Screen Capture Kit, new features, Windows recorded using the new ESC Recording Output Configuration API will now have a new Stop Recording This Window Menu item in the purple window menu to stop the Windows recording stream. 
Regarding deprecations, applications utilizing deprecated APIs for content capture, such as CG Display Stream and CG Window List Create Image, can trigger system alerts, indicating they might be able to collect detailed information about the user. Developers need to migrate to Screen Capture Kit and SC Content Sharing Picker. Regarding security and privacy new features, when attempting to change home directory of a user, DSCL and DS import will trigger privacy prompts. Previously, this did not happen when a device was under MDM management. Regarding setup assistant resolved issues. Fixed, file vault pane is shown and is automatically enabled with recovery key when iCloud is signed in. Fixed, end of setup assistant might only show a blurred background with no text or buttons. Regarding shortcuts resolved issues. Fixed, the shortcuts editor might offer some new actions that are not yet ready for use. If you save a shortcut with one of these actions, you might need to correct it after a future update with the corrected actions. Fixed, some actions are missing from the actions drawer, but are still available for use. Regarding translation new features, users can translate text and display results in app. See the translation session class and learn more in the WWDC 24 video, Meet the Translation API. Translation now supports translating Hindi in the Translate app, system-wide translation, Safari translation, and the new translation APIs. Regarding wallet resolved issues. Fixed, disbursement requests on Mac might appear as regular payments requests when handed off to iPhone. So that was all about this build. The rest of the build seems identical. If you want to know more, check out Apple's official documentation for Mac OS, Sequoia 15 Beta 7 release notes. So that was it. Hope it was useful. Consider like for the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you have any questions, just comment down below. Thanks for watching and have a great day ahead.